everyone, welcome to my channel and happy 2021. My name's Sarah and I make stuff. So 2020 was the year of the, the face masks and I made thousands of them, Lit literally thousands of them. I sold them, I donated them. Um, I have pretty much <laughs> sewn at least one face mask every day since last March. So my life has pretty much revolved around face masks for the last almost year. Uh, but I hate wearing them. I hate wearing them. I will, I do wear them everywhere. I'm very safe if I'm around anyone not in my household, I have my face mask on. But with that being said, after I like leave a store, I am so quick to like rip that thing off in my car and I got really tired of carrying it around. So I started making these really pretty like lanyard mask hangers and I've been getting a lot of compliments on them. So I am here to show you how to make them. They're super easy. You can make them beaded, chain, string, whatever you want. Today, I'm going to be making a beaded one. And I'm also going to be making a little like dangly mask charm to go with it because I'm super extra and I need more decoration on my body. So, I will go over the supplies really quick. Everything can be bought at like your Michaels, your Amazon, your craft store of choice, and it should be pretty inexpensive. So let's go over supplies. So the first thing you will need if you are making a beaded necklace, I guess if you were doing this project, you will need beads. I have two strands of beads. I have a large, I don't know, I got, I got these from my local bead shop and they called them moon glass. I assume they're just normal glass that has some iridescence to it, but these ones are pink. They're super pretty. I also have these smaller, also kind of iridescent, opalescent, pretty beads. I make my mask chains, hangers, lanyards, whatever you want to call them. Um, anywhere between 12 and 20 inches. This one will be a 20 inch one. So it's long, it like looks like a necklace when you wear it, they're really great. The second thing you'll need is something to bead on, a string of some kind. I like the Stretch Magic just because I'm wearing it and I'm moving it. So I wanna make sure it won't snap if I accidentally like tug on it. So this is my one millimeter Stretch Magic. It's thinner or thicker um, than the stuff I usually use for beading. Um, I used to have a really hard time tying knots in this, but I have a little trick that makes it way easier. So next you will need jump rings. I buy these multi-packs from Amazon because they have like a huge range of sizes. They have itty bitty ones, they have huge ones. I use these for my stained glass. I use them for pretty much everything. Um, you can use any size you want. This is personal preference. Totally, I'm gonna be using a variety of sizes just cause I want it to look a very specific way. You will also need lobster clasp. You can't see that. That doesn't look like anything. We'll need Lobster clasps. I ordered these. These are like larger than like the normal ones you'd find in like the jewelry section of Michaels. I'm not actually sure if Michaels sells these kind of larger ones, but I ordered these on Amazon. I will link everything below if I can find it, the beads. I got it at our local bead shop, so I can't link them, but I can link you to the bead shop and they ship. Shout out to the bead shop in New Orleans. They have the prettiest stuff, I love them. The next thing you'll need is kind of optional. I think they make everything look more finished. They're very tiny, so. Focus, you focus. Okay, so these are little, there we go. Clamshell closures and they will go on the knotted end of your string, beading, thread, stretch, magic, whatever you're using, and they just enclose the knot to give it a little bit more 
strength? Strength? Is that the word I'm looking for? Sure. Um, oh, you'll probably want pliers for your jump rings and your clamshells. I have a little like needle nose pair and then sort of a heavier duty, clampier pair. These, I use these for everything. You will need scissors to cut your beading string, stretch magic, or whatever you are using. Now, I do have a couple optional items that I will be using today, but you could definitely do this project without them. So the first one is some, ooh, some pretty thin chain. Um, I'm gonna use this to make my little dangly charms. Um, if you're not making a charm, you don't need this. Don't worry about it. I also have some little wire snips to cut my chain. This chain is actually really soft, so I could cut it with scissors, but I have these, so I'm gonna use them. The last optional item is super helpful if you have it. So it's just a straight pin, like you would use for sewing. And this is to help tie knots. I'll show you uh, how I use it. You can use a safety pin. You can use like, you could probably use a bobby pin. I haven't tried it with bobby pin, but you probably could. This is to make sure that you get your knots in the right spot. It's really helpful. Makes everything look a little bit better. Okay, so I am going to drop my camera down to my table and I will show you how to make this beaded mask hanger. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is cut your stretch magic or thread or whatever you're using to length. I'm gonna be using my cutting mat because it has a measuring, has a ruler measuring has the measurements on there. And I'm going to cut it like significantly longer than I actually need it. So I'm cutting it about 28 inches when I only want it to be 20 inches. That side. If you are using stretch magic, this is the trick. Take it and stretch it. Like, just, And now look, it gained like 10 inches after I stretched it out. So this is gonna make it way easier for you to tie knots in it because it'll have less give. It's still very stretchy, but it's not gonna like stretch out and be saggy once you've beaded it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tie my knot. Just gonna do one knot and two knots. And I'm just gonna pull those like obscenely tight. You know what? Let's go for a third because I. Oh, it's not even close. There, there we go. So now that you have your little knot, I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna take one of my clam shells I don't know if you can even see that. A little clam shell. And I'm gonna go in through, like if the clam shell is like this, like there's your clam shell, you're gonna go in between. Wait, I have a better visual representation. Okay, here is my visual representation of a clamshell. There is your clamshell. You're going to go between the shells and out the back so your knot is sitting between those two metal pieces. And the good thing about this thicker stretch magic is that it is hefty enough that you don't need to put like a beading needle or anything to string it. So once I have my clamshell on there, I'm gonna take my little pliers and I'm gonna squeeze it closed. So your clamshell should be totally closed and you should have a little tail sticking out and we'll cut that off later. And so now we're just gonna bead. I'm gonna do one big bead and one little bead alternating until I am completely out of beads.
Okay, there we go. There is our, I believe it is 20, 20 inches of beads. Now, before we knot the end, we're gonna wanna put our other clamshell. And this time we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna go in the back, the back end of the clamshell. So you have the open end with the, the shells like that. You're gonna come in the hole on the back of it. And that's because we're going to tie a knot on the other side of it. So we have jump rings that go on either side of the beading. So string it through, pull it all the way to the end. And this is where your straight pin, safety pin, hairpin will come in handy to help tie a knot. So get as close as you can to that clamshell and tie your knot like that. What I like to do is take my needle and go through the big, the big part of that knot and then sort of close the knot around the pen and then you can slide it down the, down the string and get it exactly where you want in the center of that clamshell. And then you just pull it out. The only problem is when you go to tie your second one, I stretch it so I can get right to that knot. Can I use my pin to help me pull the tail through that second knot if I can see it? My only problem with this stretch magic is it's clear and I have a really hard time seeing it. But again, tie your knot, put your pin through it, slide it down into that clamshell. And then to make sure it's really tight, I like to take my thumb at the top of the knot, and my pointer finger on the other side, pinch it and pull just so I know it's really tight. Then take your little clampies and clamp that clamshell around your knot. If your knots don't feel very secure, you can take clear nail polish and dab it either on the knot before you close a clamshell or what I like to do is close a clamshell and then dab clear nail polish so it sort of seals it all together. And now I will take my big extra scissors and I will trim those tails off. One tail, go back to the beginning and do that tail. And now you will add your jump rings. So I have my two jump rings. And I also am going to add my lobster claws right now, my lobster clasps. Make sure that your lobster clasps work before you add them. I've noticed that when I buy sort of bulk packs of them, like a third of them just don't work. So it's better to find that out before you start putting them on projects. So I'm gonna take my pliers. I'm going to open my jump rings, open to the side like that. So you have sort of like a, a curved instead of pulling them open to make a bigger circle. Does that make sense? And throw your lobster claps on them and close them. I'm gonna do this with both of them. Throw that on there. So you should have two jump rings with a lobster clasp. So these clamshells have sort of an open hook on the end. And to close them up, I like to put my jump ring on them. So it's hooked like that. And then I'll take my little pliers in the hook 
and I'll roll it shut. If you can see that now, see that little hook is now closed and I'll do a little pinch just to make sure that there's no gap for that jump ring to come out of. There. And now we will do the other one. Hook your jump ring. Curl that one shut. Oh, that one was way easier. <laughs> okay, there you go. There is our clamshell hooked to the jump ring. And your mask chain is done. All you have to do is crimp these around the elastic of your mask and you are good to go. So to go with that, I am going to make a little dangly crystal charm to go with it. If you watched my crystal pendant soldering videos, these are from that. So if you want to learn how to make these, you can go check out that video. I'll link it below. But okay. So for these, I'm going to have one large jump ring with a lobster claw. Lobster clasp, I keep calling them claws. Two little bitty jump rings. And two lengths of chain. I'm going to do one longer one and one shorter one. And I just used my little clasp to, to cut that chain. So sort of place your, your things where you want them to be. I might cut this one a little bit shorter so my crystals don't bump around each other too much. So first thing we're going to do is take our big jump ring and we're going to open it up. Take your two pairs of pliers, pinch with the little opening at the top here and twist it to the side. Looks like that. I need to put on my lobster clasp and both pieces of chain I just cut. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my teeny tiny jump rings right here. I'm going to open them. I'm going to put one end on the chain and the other end through the jump ring on my crystals. charm or bead or whatever you have hanging around. So there's my little charm. I guess I could use that for all kinds of things. So I'm going to bring my camera back up and show you what it looks like completely finished. Okay, here's how the final project turned out. My little beads my little danglies. So I chose these, they turned out to be a little bit heavy, which I don't mind, but if you're gonna make these and have an issue, I would suggest using something lighter. I hope you enjoyed this little craft DIY video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more crafty videos by me, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in buying any of my face masks or any of my chain mask, hanger, lanyard things, uh, check out my Etsy shop. I've linked it below. I make a bunch of new stuff all the time, so keep an eye out. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. 
If you tried this project, tag me in your photos. I'd love to see them. And until next time, bye guys.